On the news tonight, nine years after Nigerians remember abducted Chibo girls call on federal government to rescue 98 others in captivity. International organizations accuse the federal government of failure to protect children. And Central Bank to mop up customers' funds in dormant accounts. It's good to have you join us on News Now on TV 360 Nigeria. I am Mary Kanu. April 14th, 2023 makes it nine years since the abduction of schoolgirls from Chibok, a rural town in Borno State, but now a global name. As the world marks the 90th anniversary of the Chibok girls' abduction, 96 of the 276 abducted girls remain unaccounted for. This anniversary comes on the heels of even more abductions being carried out by terrorist groups across the country. Well, this next report has more details. April 14, 2014 is imprinted in the hearts of many Nigerians. On this day, the Boko Haram sect unleashed terror and abducted 276 girls from the dormitory of Government Girls Secondary School, Chibok. The terrorists created widespread panic, burned down houses and destroyed other valuable assets and seized the girls from the boarding school. This event, unknown to many, was the first of many to come and nine years later, 96 of the Chibok girls are still missing and more than 1,400 school children have been abducted in the northern part of the country in recent years. In February 2021 alone, bandits abducted another 200 schoolgirls in Zamfara State in one single attack and as recently as last week, another 10 schoolgirls were abducted by unknown gunmen. Starting from 31st of January, the government introduced the cashless policy, which was a highly controversial. And um, at the point, the government had to reverse its steps. And so it has now opened up the coffers, as it were. And now there is more cash in circulation than there were um, between January 31st and, let's say, the third and, and week of, of um, March 2023. So that, too, may have contributed specifically to kidnap for ransom incidents that were seen in parts of Kasena. And, and Zamfara State as well as possibly Kaduna and, and Niger State. Over 11,000 schools in seven states in the north have been forced to close down due to the ongoing insurgency, and about 1,000 schools have either been damaged or destroyed. A despite the government's efforts to fight the jihadist insurgency in the north and protect communities, kidnappings have been on the rise. What we're doing and what is happening right now in the country is a situation where these bandits are taking uh, advantage of the loopholes that exist in the security infrastructure of this country. The criminal elements are taking the vulnerability of our security agents and they are capitalizing on that vulnerability uh, because when it comes to security, uh, you're supposed to go before the loss. Uh, each time you go after the law, security has been defeated. Uh, most of these criminal elements, they are operating in their government space, you know. Their government space is where they take their shelter. Uh, what is going to stop the government from going to their government space and uh, making their government space uh, uncomfortable for these criminal elements? More than 10 million children in Nigeria are out of school with varied reasons, but in the north, kidnappings are the main motivation for keeping children away from pursuing their education. And as Nigeria marks the ninth anniversary of a Chibo girl's abduction, many have called on the government to bring back our girls. Mary Kanu, TV 360. Nigeria. And rising from the nine year anniversary of the abduction of 276 Chibok girls, Amnesty International says a lack of accountability for crimes against children in Nigeria is emboldening impunity. In a statement, the acting director of Amnesty International Nigeria, Issa Sanusi, described the kidnappings that have taken place as the abduction of the Chibok schoolgirls as an urgent failure of the federal government to protect children. Sanusi faulted the federal government 
government for not carrying out a single credible investigation into the security failures that left children vulnerable to the atrocities committed by Boko Haram and gunmen. In a related development, the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, has expressed concern over the subjection of thousands of children in northeast Nigeria to grave violations of their rights. The UN agency says the impact of the conflict on education is alarming with repercussions that will likely affect generations. While still in security matters, the police tactical operatives in Zamfara State have rescued nine hostages comprising seven females and two males who were kidnapped on Tuesday at Kucheri Village in Safi Luka government area of the state. According to the public relations officer of the state, Mohamed Shehu, the rescue of the victims was courtesy of a piece of credible information obtained from a good Samaritan which the police used and successfully rescued the victims. Shehu also reveal the victims while with the police underwent medical checks at the police clinic facility in Gusol after which they were debriefed by detectives and have been re reunited with their families. The Commissioner of Police, Kolo Yusuf, while congratulating his operatives for their rescue mission of the victims, reassured the public of the sustained onslaught against the activities of bandits and other criminal elements. Away from security matters, the President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, has made a case for capacity building for members of the Income and Tenth National Assembly for efficient and effective service delivery. Lawan spoke while receiving the 2020, 2021 and 2022 annual reports of the activities of the National Assembly Service Commission. The Senate President said there should be provisions for capacity building, especially for the new members of the Tenth Assembly, to achieve the set goals and targets. National Assembly cannot be efficient and effective without a staff of the Assembly that is motivated, that is trained and retrained to provide the services that are necessary for the National Assembly members to perform their duties. So it is in the interest of us members of the National Assembly and indeed the country that the National Assembly Service Commission functions well, that it provides the services that are required of it for the benefit of all in the National Assembly uh, ecosystem. In Nigeria, only one doctor is available for 5,000 patients, but this rate is far below the World Health Organization's recommended ratio of one doctor to 600 patients. The situation is even made worse with the brain drain the health sector has experienced for many years as more and more doctors migrate to Western countries for a chance to earn more pay and better working conditions. Our correspondent Sidney Okafor in this report takes a look at Nigeria's brain problem and some of the arguments around it. Every year, about 5,000 Nigerian doctors immigrate to countries offering more pay and better working condition. Why this situation is worsening Nigerian's brain drain problem? A bill to curb this trend has passed second reading at the National Assembly. The bill mandates Nigerian trained medical and dental practitioner practice for five years in the country before a full license can be issued to them. But medical practitioners have strongly condemned the bill. Nigeria has a constitution, which was um, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, um, as amended in 1999, and that's what we work on at the pro at the moment as a nation. So, whatever bill anyone is bringing forward, it must not contravene this constitution and one of the major things in this constitution of course everything in constitution is major for the country but um um section 41 talks about the freedom of movement so there's no way you can create a bill or an act that will go against the constitution every citizen has the right to movement and this is not even a national law. This is actually an acceptable law globally. 
To solve Nigerians' brain drain problem, medical experts say the government must raise the standard of remuneration for medical practitioners in the country. UK um, doctors will strike, and one thing the woman that led that um, industrial action said was that I can't be thinking so much about my patients, and I still end up thinking too much about my bills. It's the same thing that applies to us here. There are a lot of patients that we have to attend to every day, and we think a lot about them. Now, when we get home, we are supposed to get it's supposed to be an abode. It's supposed to be a place where we relax and don't have to think about our bills, how the bills are going to get paid. Another thing is that the greatest fear of humanity, one of the greatest fear of humanity is uncertainty. Many of us came into this, this profession after being assured that uh, after you must have stayed in school for six years to seven years, you're going to be sure about a job that's going to pay you well. But just in the middle of the journey, we realized that that was very, very untrue. What uh, the federal um, house is trying to do is modern day slavery. Uh, I think they are not asking enough questions. Why exactly are doctors trying to leave? Right? Why exactly are we not attracted to our own healthcare system? This is where our families are. But we are all, all trying to leave. They should think about these things because, number one, what is being done in terms of infrastructure? What is being done in terms of remuneration? What is being done in terms of the quality of work that doctors are facing here? Are, are there any efforts into improving funding into healthcare? They aren't asking these questions. They're just bent on keeping people here. The real problem here is not about people leaving. It's about why. Why don't we have a sustainable healthcare system here that can entice people and help people grow and thrive? The goal of every person is to thrive in their career. The fact that you are doing what you're doing is because you want to be the best at it. You want to maximize and give back to the society. But it is wrong and unfair to try to rid people of that part of personal accomplishment and achieving in their career in the name of oh you just have to render service of course we want to render service the goal of medicine is to care for people what do people want to care for their people and nigerians are part of them they are people but the issue is if you don't create an environment where people can learn can grow can thrive it would always appear it's you're threatening them medical experts and students have also asked the government to reconsider some aspect of the bill and also improve the nation health system Sydney Okafor reporting for TV360 Lagos. The Real Estate Developers Association of Nigeria has said only strong legislation will help to address recurrent building collapses in the country. President of the association, Ali Wamakoa at a media briefing in Abuja, said the association has submitted a bill before the National Assembly to address issues relating to building codes and punishment for erring developers and orders to sanitize the building sector and save lives. The association also condemned the land grabbing and racketeering currently unfolding and the FCT stressing that none of its members is involved in illegal land deals. Building collapse uh, cannot just go, come and go like that. There are issues supposed to be looked into, which first, before you start any higher rising, you must get an approval from the government agency. You cannot just come and start building anywhere. And before you get any approval, there must be indicators of how you want to do that building, the structural and uh, architectural and structural and uh, civil engineering of that building must be categorically stated, including all the technical issues, before you are given approval. Then second, there are engineers who are supposed to supervise that building. And if they now do the supervision in accordance with the uh, 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 building code, national building code, there will be no issue of building collapse. The people that are supervising those buildings are not. They are not spirit. They shall be called to book. Because the professionals are supposed to do their duties. If there is any cutting corner in anything, either from the professionals or from the uh, governmental authorities who approve this building, definitely there will be such ugly incidents will happen. And the impact of rain, and I'm telling you, we are taking this thing bull by the horn. Uh, we presented a bill to the National Assembly, which by the grace of God, if that bill is signed into law, the issue of building collapse will be in the first. We'll take a break here, but still to come, Rafael Nadal pulls out of Barcelona and fresh French Open Blow will bring you details of the story and more right after this break.
Islands are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? The president must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts and undiluted truths. I have not believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues. Welcome back. Here's a recap of our top stories tonight. April 14th, 2023 makes it nine years since the abduction of schoolgirls from Chibok, a rural town in Burunu State. Overworld marks the ninth year anniversary of the Chibok girls' abduction. 96 of the 276 abducted girls remain unaccounted for. This anniversary comes on the heels of even more abductions being carried out by terrorist groups across the country. We also told you that rising from the 9th anniversary of the abduction of 276 Chibok girls, Amnesty International says lack of accountability for crimes against children in Nigeria is emboldening impunity. In a statement, the acting director of Amnesty International Nigeria, Issa Sanusi, described the kidnappings that have taken place since the abduction of the Chibok school girls as an urgent failure of the federal government to protect children. Similarly, the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, says the impact of the conflict on education is alarming, with repercussions that will likely affect generations. Well, in case you missed any of our news bulletin or for more updates, you can catch us on Line Max World TV or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV360Nigeria. On Facebook, we're at TV360Online. And now to COVID-19 stories and updates. India has been witnessing a spike in daily COVID-19 cases, of the country reporting more than 11,000 new infections in the past 24 hours, according to the Union Health Ministry. Amid a daily spike in coronavirus infections in India, health experts have advised people to wear masks and follow COVID-appropriate behaviour after Rajasthan Chief Minister Ashok Galat tested positive for the virus on Friday. The Union Health Ministry has also suggested that those who came in contact with him recently must get themselves tested and follow COVID guidelines. And the Philippine Statistics Authority says while the number of fatalities due to COVID-19 dropped significantly in 2022, heart diseases remained the leading cause of death in the country. From January to November 2022, the country logged 16,080 COVID-19 deaths, which is 85.6% which is lower than the 111,599 fatalities recorded during the same period in 2021. Meanwhile, the PSA says the top three causes of death in the country from January to November of 2022 were cerebrovascular diseases as well as neoplasm. We'll take a short break and be back with business updates to so stay with us. Hello? 
Yeah, I found your wallet in front of a supermarket. Meet me at Apple Junction. Yes, I'll be waiting for you. Now we find out. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, officer. You know, it's surprising that men like you still exist in the police force. Yes, oh, oh, yes. This is just a token <laughs> of my appreciation. Oh, no. You don't need to do this. We are only doing our job. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. God You're bless welcome. you. You're welcome. Now I know police is really my friend. Yes. Friend. Hey. Okay, which guy will be this one? I don't understand. You know your problem. You are greedy. I'm a policeman who is doing his job. All forms of corruption in the force. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. Welcome back. Falashade Ogurinde is standing by with business updates. Falashade, over to you. Well, many thanks, Mary. In business, the Central Bank of Nigeria has proposed that banks should transfer funds in accounts that have been dormant for up to 10 years into a trust fund account. The Director of Financial Policy and Regulation Department of the Apex Bank, Chipuzo FOB, made this known in a signed document. The Apex Bank clarified that the balances will be invested in government securities like treasury bills and will be returned to the beneficiaries no later than 10 days of notice. We'll take a break here, but be back with a review of the stock market to stay with us. Trading on Nigeria Stock Exchange ended on a bearish trend as market capitalization rested at a 28.27 trillion naira mark. In the aggregate, 106 NGX listed equities participated in trading, ending with 19 gainers and 14 losers. Now, speaking of losers, Cadbury Nigeria came out last with an end of day price appreciation of 9.73% um, at 10 naira, 20 copper per share. Now on the gainers table, Multivest Mining and Exploration left the gainers with 9.96% share price appreciation, closing at 2 naira 54 copper per share, followed by Transcope Nigeria. At the end of today's trading, the total of 260 million volume of shares valued at 2.4 billion naira exchange hands in 3,766 deals. Now compared with the previous NGX trading, today's data shows 14% decline in volume, but 14 improvement in turnover now away from the ngx to some of our select global stocks uh, FTSE dow jones and nikkei well it's a mixed trading day for FTSE and nikkei finishing strong at 0 0.36 and 1.20 percent respectively it's however not the same for us dow jones which ended on a bearish trend as investors assessed a weak retail sales report as well as stronger than expected corporate earnings and that's it on business news and stock market review back to you mary for the rest of the news Many thanks for the update, Falashadi. Now, on the global scene, Egypt's foreign minister, Sameh Shukri, has urged Turkey to withdraw troops from Syria, underscoring lingering tensions despite recent efforts to mentize the spurt in dem diplomatic contact comes with Turkey married in an economic crisis one month before key elections, seeking to normalize relations with a host of Arab countries with which it formed rivalries in the past decade. Shukri reaffirmed Cairo's desire to continue improving relations which broke down following the ousting of Egypt's Islamist president Mohamed Morsi, an ally of Turkey, in 2013. All up next is Entertainment Report.
Nigerian actress Bisola Ayola and Ghanaian actor Ajte Anang have been announced as the host of the 2023 Africa Magic Viewers Choice Award nominees announcement. For the better part of a decade, the AMVC has celebrated excellence in movie making across Africa, and this year the award ceremony is set for its ninth installment. The call for entries commenced in February 20, 2023, and ended on March 17th and was open to filmmakers from across Africa. Come April 16th, the nominees for this year's award will be announced at an event that will be broadcasted across all African magic channels on DSTV and GoTV from 7 p.m. American pop diva and songwriter Alicia Keys has caught the attention of Nigerians with her desire to work with one of our finest musicians, Wizkid. Weeks back, Alicia Keys disclosed on a podcast interview that she and Wizkid have vibed on a few songs yet to be released. Now reacting to a social media user who tagged her in a post demanding to know when she was going to finally work with Wizkid, Keys attested that it was about time she fulfilled her desires. That's it on the entertainment segment of News Now. And now in sports, Rafael Nadal's preparation for a slope after record extending 15th French Open title suffered a further blow when he announced his withdrawal from the ATP Barcelona tournament. The 36 year old Spaniard says he is yet to recover full fitness from the hip flexor injury he sustained in the Australian Open in January, which saw him miss this week's Monte Carlo Open. His fitness problems have become an increasing issue since he won his 14th French Open crown in 2022. His long absence from the circuit this time around has seen him drop out of the top 10 for the first time since April 2005 and is presently ranked 15th. And that's a package this evening. Thank you for watching. I am Mary Kanu.